In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we answer fitness Worldwide. and health questions asked by listeners like you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a breakdown of what happened in this podcast. Now, we open the episode with a 37-minute introductory portion. This is where we talk about current events. We talk about ourselves, what's happening. We have a lot of fun. Sometimes we mention our sponsors. After that 37 mark, then we get into answering uh, the question. So here's the breakdown. We opened up the episode by talking about porn searches. Hey, uh, <laughs> coming in hot. I read a, a, an article that talked about what women tend to look for in porn, and Justin has a realization that maybe his wife's watching porn when he's not around. Oh, my God. Then we, blown. <laughs> then we talk about how his sons are doing a car washing business in the neighborhood. That's super, super awesome to hear. I talk about the time I had with my family up in Truckee, Tahoe area over the weekend. We had a total blast. Uh, and my brother, of course... Used up a lot of the Organifi supplements. His favorite was Pure. Now, Pure is a nootropic-based supplement. It's good for the mind, gives you mental clarity, especially when you mix it with caffeine. That's a great stack, by the way. Now, Organifi is the company that makes Pure. They also make a green juice. They also make a protein powder. All their products are organic. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you get 20% off all their products. So here's what you do. Go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash mind pump, use the code mind pump, and you'll get 20% off. Then I talked about a meta analysis of studies on vegans and mental health. So there might be some something to that. Mm. We talked about campers. Uh, people are buying a lot of these RVs now. I guess COVID is closing a lot of places. So people are like, let me just lock myself in a camper and go on vacation. Yeah. Uh, we talked about the clogged toilet at Justin's house. <laughs> surprise, surprise. I scarred them for life. Justin brought up a show on Netflix called Sunset Selling. Uh, he got me interested. I think I might start watching that. It was totally Adam, but yeah. The, oh, my bad. Yeah. Then we talked about uh, where creativity came from uh, or comes from. There's a brain imaging study that shows which side of the brain contributes to creativity. Then we got into the question. So here's the first one. This person wants to know, look, when you're trying to develop a lagging body part, how do you incorporate it into routine? So we talk about uh, targeting areas of your body that are not developing like other parts of your body and what you can do about that. The next question, this person wants to know, what are the best hamstring exercises that don't require a lot of equipment? So we give some of our favorites. The next question, this person, look, we they want to know, we've talked all about stretching. What's the difference between stretching and priming? You know, we talk a lot about priming on the podcast. By the yeah, way, what's the difference? By the way, if you want to learn more about priming, uh, Justin did a webinar. It's totally free. He teaches you how to assess your body and prime your body before your workouts. You can sign up at mapsprimewebinar.com. And then the final question uh, this person wants to know what's better, body part split routines, where I train like two or three body parts each day, or full body workouts, where I train the whole body each time that I train. Um, also, you've got 72 hours to take advantage of our Memorial Day apparel sale. All of our apparel on sale. There's three days left. Uh, go to uh, maps, uh, excuse me, uh, mindpumpmedia.com to check that out. Oh, my bad. Two days left. Wow, Doug, you're, you're trying to put everybody on, on <laughs> hurry them up, huh? Yeah. Uh, he changed that literally done. while I was talking. 48 hours left <laughs> for the Memorial Day apparel sale. Also, uh, 72 hours. So here's a 72 hour one. For Map Starter, fifty percent off. Now, Map Starter is a great beginner program into resistance training. So, if you want to to reap the benefits of lifting weights like toning and sculpting your body, building muscle and strength, speeding up your metabolism, Map Starter is a perfect program to start with. It's a great at home program. All you need is a physio ball. That's the big ball full of air um, and dumbbells. You could do the whole program with just those those two pieces of equipment. Again, the program is 50% off. It's called Map Starter. Here's how you enroll and get that discount. Go to mapsstarter.com. That's M-A-P-S-S-T-A-R-T-E-R.com and use the code STARTER50. That's S-T-A-R-T-E-R-5-0, -E no space, for the discount. Shouldn't have to do it at the same time, too. Can't we got to make peace with reality? Yeah, I, I'd rather. I, I think I'd rather be cool all year long and have spent a thousand or two thousand dollars than to be miserable and like having to deal with fucking. Here's the thing, though, Adam. Hmm. You are cool. That's no. true. No matter how hot the temperature gets, I mean, Adam's cool. I is, can't argue with you. That's something. Yeah. Is your argue. does your uh, does your is your lip hotter than everywhere else on your face? <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, Get a little extra insulation. Don't hate on my mustache top. just because you can't grow a full one. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's the middle. Why doesn't the middle grow? <laughs> Somebody asked me that in my questions. <laughs> Did they really? Yeah, you have the reverse Hitler yeah. where it's well, like, yeah. yeah. What does it say? You don't it have just, that they middle said, stash? Like, why can't Sal uh, grow a complete mustache? And I don't know. You have to ask Sal that. That's weird, huh? Yeah. I wonder what the deal is with that. I think it's because- What was the other one? It's always funny when I get, on well, my Q&As, when I get questions about you guys, I'm like, that's a, ask Sal or ask Justin. Because <laughs> people like when we talk shit. I know. That's why. Well, when you serve me up a good one to talk shit about you, like I'm all about the it. The one that killed yeah. me the most, because every once in a while, each of us will do a post and then we'll say something underneath to fuck with each other and uh -huh. see how many likes we get. Yeah. The one time, I, I don't remember what I did, but there was a post and I was wearing gray sweats and a gray shirt, but it was all the same exact gray. Yeah. And Adam said it looked like a, would you say it looked like a onesie? It well, like a jumper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What made it perfect was I quoted what you were saying in the video. It just came together. So, oh, so, dude. Yeah, it was, you did that. I fell. I almost fell off the toilet and was, I was yeah, laughing that, so hard. That so was, I was perfect. Like, I, was I got just, you again on a, a post recently. You did, dude. Yeah. You're like yeah. way winning I am right winning. now. I am winning right now. We yeah. should keep a little tally. like every, And it only counts if you get like 50 or more likes. The like, problem with me is yeah, like- I got like 130 for your snow one. Dude. Yeah, dude. You do a good <laughs> job too. I, I can do a good oh, job. Oh, that's what I got him on was the snow one. I got yeah. I got you good. Sometimes I do good. Yeah. It was and, poetic. And, and so I can do okay, but the problem is is that if I, if I think I got to get you back, then it, I end up getting mean. I know. You know yeah, what I mean? That's like your go-to button. You, yeah. you are the guy that goes, Yeah, you get, fat or something. Yeah, you know? Not even worse than your that. You're bald, yeah. stupid, Your fat, mom's a bad ugly. mother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, whoa, like, guy. Ouch. Whoa. You're, you're, you're We've mom, gone past funny. Yeah, yeah. Your mom drinks because you. Because <laughs> yeah. no, you. I don't say that. <laughs> yeah. Dude, uh, uh, did you guys know that Pornhub puts out a, uh, every year they put out like a most popular porn searches wow. and then they break it down by gender and age and all that stuff. Did where you do, that? You're where just you, coming right out. Yeah. With where it. do you see this I stuff? I love it. Uh, just research. Just, <laughs> I go down rabbit holes, you know, <laughs> quote unquote research. And you know, hey, yeah. you know, you can't use that word anymore. I know. Yeah. Adam oh. checked me on that the other day. I, it's not research. Okay. It wasn't yeah. me checking you. I was just repeating what I said. I I lane, know. lane post. Whatever. Uh, yeah. Anyway, all I the, was, all the PhDs get upset. I was doing something like research, but I was, so I was sexual. This is interesting because, uh, searches that are anonymous tell you a lot, you know, about people because when they do surveys in the past, sex studies were surveys. Hmm. The problem with the surveys, yeah, no one's going to admit their weird fetish. And and in the moment when you're like, you, you want to, you know, get one out, you're you might make a decision that's a little different than when you're sitting in a lab and asking a question. You're not actually, yeah, you know, in that just in it for the novelty. Yeah, it, whatever. Anyway, so you know uh, I mean? so it's interesting, right? So they had they showed uh, you know top porn searches by men and women. Mm. So do you want to guess some of the top porn searches for women? So I don't know this by the way. Apparently women are okay. the females are the fastest growing. Their rate of porn uh, consumption is like exploding. Apparently, yeah. Where is this? I I would contest that. They hide it, dude. Yeah, they don't tell you. Yeah, they like when do they do it? Yeah, you know? when you're here at work. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, one hundred percent. Yeah. So so, what do you think are some women's favorites? Make th take some guesses. Oh, I'm not gonna guess this. this Why? Will, this will get me in trouble. No, it won't. Why do yeah. you get in trouble, dude? Yeah. You were the one that told me like they watch a lot of uh, gay porn. Yeah, gay. Okay, like so two dudes. Believe it or not, bisexual. Smashing. Bisexual is up there. Bisexual male is, it, is actually is up it, there. Isn't? I mean, I see you're gonna get me in trouble here, but isn't tying up and rape fantasies like one of the high ones? You know what? It doesn't say that here, um, I Adam. I it doesn't say that, yeah. but it, you know, but <laughs> a lot of those categories. Hey, thanks for helping me out. You're there. welcome, yeah. dude. Yeah, I should have yeah. just lied. No, I, yeah, no, yeah, it's not there. Yeah, it's yeah. not, yeah. The, it's not yeah. the top one. Well, well, nobody's into that. So the top one, which I would have predicted, is lesbian. Which is, I think that's a that's a that would be a top one for women, right? They're gonna kind of seek out like a little bit of this, hmm. you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, college. But there's like you know, uh, gang bang is up there. That's one of the top ones. That's wow. kind of interesting. That's interesting because I think that would be the one that would be least admitted. You know what I mean? They, they might not admit. So that's up there. Mature is up there. Hente. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's, what's mature mean? Mature is, I think, people like, like over- old silver dude. Well, just, yeah. well, I mean, right? mature could be women or men, right? Uh, I think it's like over 40. Por wr wrinkle porn. In porn, if you're over 40, you're like, oh, that's like mature, right? That's considered mature. Yeah. So yeah. that one's up there. Um, threesome is up there. Uh, predictably, big dick is up there. That's a, that's a top one. Weird. Yeah. I know. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. Hente. Hentai. I think I'm pronouncing it right. Am I saying it wrong? Hentai. Hentai. Sorry. Why did, Doug why knows did, how to say yeah, it. Why does Doug, yeah, why does Doug know this? <laughs> Japanese. Oh, okay. This is like cartoon. Oh, anime. Cartoon porn. 
Isn't that weird? Now, is it like... Is, is it, it blurred and everything? No, 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 no. Is it like real cartoon characters that are having... Is that what it is? No, I think it's like their own characters that are doing this. But, dressed, dressed up, like so anime. I saw that and I'm like, that's weird. But then I looked at the guy's favorites and... Hun- hentai? Hentai. Hentai. Hentai for men actually ranks a little higher. So there you go. Hmm. I guess we're all a bunch of weirdos. <sighs> anyway. Gang bangs, it, huh? Interesting, right? Yeah. Kind of interesting. I think it's more interesting what you be researching. What? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not. I think that's. I think that's more interesting. Well, Almost as interesting as Justin's shirt he's wearing. Yeah. Today. What are you yeah. doing? Yeah. Hey, you know, I thought like it'd be cool to have like a death metal casual day. A death yeah. metal casual. Yeah, just oh, a you got flip flops and a death yeah. metal shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I figured we'd institute this like every Wednesday. What are you doing? Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's funny because I was like getting coffee this morning, <laughs> and I think I threw off the uh, barista or whatever. Like, got all scared. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean. It's could, a little intimidating. Could have been the flip flops too. What does it say? Could have been it? that, or does I just shaved my What head. does it say? It says something death. Death. This is uh, this is our our guys uh, over at the Liquid Death. Oh, it's oh. a Liquid Death shirt. Yeah, yeah. They sent it to me. I was oh, like, I didn't oh, even this is cool. That. It's cool, but it really is scary. Like my, it scares my kids. Oh. Yeah. Hey, did you tell me? I, I thought we were in the thread. I don't know if this is the best time to talk about this, but I'm curious, and so I'm going to bring it up. Uh, you, whiskey company coming after you right now? Yeah, yeah. Bush Mills. Yeah, yeah. What's that all? about? I have no idea. I think they probably went through my thing and saw like I was the only one that like posted pictures of me drinking. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm the. <laughs> But I'm still like trying to be healthy, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, so, yeah. They're like oh, cool, it's a good demographic. You know, I have no idea, but Irish whiskey, I'm all about it. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, I'm have sure they, have Justin's they said- like, just give me twenty percent off. I'll mention. You guys. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know what to charge for that. You yeah, know, I'm yeah. just like, I'll just give me whiskey. <laughs> now, have they sent you over yeah. anything yet? Have you? I mean, they they're trying to throw like a contract out there. I'm just like, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know what to charge for like Bro, stories go get some. and whatnot. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll negotiate it for you. Yeah, yeah thanks. Right. I'll thanks, be your Dad. I'll be your agent. You I know, it's funny. It. Yeah. When I was younger and to working out, my dream, one of my dream, because I loved supplements so much, I still kind of do. But as a kid, it was crazy, right? Yeah. One of my dreams was like just to get free supplements. Like, oh my god, oh, I, I know, right? That would be so <laughs> awesome. Now we're in this situation where companies send us supplements all the time and they're just all sitting in the back. Oh, yeah. So funny. But when I was a kid, that would have been so exciting. Oh, you if you would have told me at 20 that that you, I would have worked for getting paid in supplements at one point. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, there was a time when I was probably spending, no joke, probably 300 something dollars a month plus on yeah. supplements alone. And my granted that at that time too, like 300 bucks was a good portion of my income, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's not like that's a lot of, that was a lot of money to me. So you probably could have convinced me when I was 20, like, hey, in the future. Oh, that was the hustle. I mean, all these supplement companies knew that. And so they like oh, yeah. would get all these like ambassadors and influencers. It to, still is. That's, do it. that's yeah. the that's the big thing I see right now still is, you know, so many of these uh young guys and girls that are coming up in the fitness space, as soon as they get a little bit of traction, you know, and, co- and companies know this, man. They if you're they can they call you a micro influencer, right? If you have thousands of people that are following you, mm-hmm. and they know that everybody wants to say they're sponsored by a company because they sound so official, and so they they just prey on all these these young these young entrepreneurs that are coming up, and you know, and I I, I get it, right? When you're when you're trying to like if you were trying to yeah, you you know, get some attention, you well, feel like, oh, it's working. Not even that. It's just like when you're, you're you're trying to build a business, right? If you're a fitness person and you're trying to build a social media business, and you just start getting into the thousands of people following you, and a company reaches out and they say, hey, we want to give you 20% commission on all your sales. You're like, oh shit, that's income, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. So they jump all over it, but man. Well, they- it's, it's. I mean, it, look, it's, it's a voluntary exchange. Obviously they find value in it. That's why they're agreeing to do it. But my advice to people is hold out because you could do a lot better. It's not really that valuable. Now, if you find it valuable, I can't, you know, I'm not going to judge what you think is worth it or not. But, the, but in my personal opinion, if you hold out a little longer and build your business a little bit smarter, You'll get way more. Dude, it's, you always free, get more. Yeah, yeah you'll you get hold way, out. Exactly. It yeah. is not worth it. You guys know the conversion rates on Instagram. We and we have a, a, a very uh, for as small a pages as, as our Instagrams all are in comparison yeah. to companies that are. are it's side. not what it looks like. No, and it, it doesn't. It doesn't generate nearly enough money. And it's and what they all do is they all make you sign stuff too, where you like have to post like every single yeah. week and and do shit like that. Like I don't want to do that. Right. Because then what what ends up happening is you spend more of your time 
promoting somebody else's company while you're trying to build your own you're brand. You're just not exactly. exactly. You're, you're not growing your own. Yeah. Exactly. That's, yeah. that's the big one. Hey, well, I'm actually excited, though. Like My kids have taken it upon themselves to uh, start their own little business uh, around our neighborhood. Oh, your kids. What I didn't know doing? that was your kids you said that about. Yeah, it was oh, my kids. Oh, no way. Yeah, so they just started. Uh, our neighbor, well- saw that they were washing our car and was like, oh my God, would you guys be willing to do ours? And and so then, you know, they charged 10 bucks uh, for them to do theirs. And this became a thing. The word spread out. And so now they've done like 20 cars already. Dude, this, what? Is, really? so, yeah. this is so crazy you're bringing this up. I literally took a picture yesterday. Today, there's kids that are washing my truck in our neighborhood. I just thought that was so, they posted signs all over the neighborhood. Yeah. And it's $10 mm -hmm. for cars, 15 Talk for about demand. I mean, it's like between like washing cars and getting haircuts, you know, like you, you go crazy with ter that. Terrible times, child labor going up. Yeah. <laughs> What's happening? I know, right? No, I think this is a, a I think, sweatshop. I think over that's here. such a great thing. It teaches them how value, it teaches them the value of money because I think a lot of kids nowadays don't know what the value is because they don't have to work for it. Uh -huh. Teaches them that, teaches them responsibility. Well, um, and they and they learn how to negotiate and all that stuff. I love this it. This also, I mean, I, I don't want to get back into a deep discussion about this, but I still get people that are tagging. That thread, Sal, that you oh, tagged no. us in and we got into with the whole Amazon thing. And, oh, they, these people don't have any other option but to work for Amazon. And that's such a crock of shit. And this is a perfect example. You've got eighth grade kids in my neighborhood who see an opportunity right now mm -hmm. to go make, and you wash as many cars as you want. I mean, you yeah. could potentially make, it. make more money than what the, the people at Amazon who say they're the, the working there is so awful. It's like, well, do, you're not forced to work there. It's voluntary and there's other ways to make money. And that's, you just have to be creative, like, and yeah, be yeah. willing to do something. It's also experience. You can show that you're being consistent somewhere. You can work up, you can find different things to do. And yeah. it's, it, it's also, you bear the burden. You're, the responsibility of how your life turns out largely is on you. And I'm not saying there are outside things that can influence that, but largely it's your, it's you. You're the one that controls all that. So yeah, you know. find the needs yeah. uh, that are out there that to, to serve. Yeah, and, and that's really what it is. And some people would say, "Oh, you're only paying kids ten bucks to wash your car. You're taking advantage." It's like, what are you? They're kids too. I'm sure they're not washing the car as Dude. good as yeah. No, you know, stop. yeah. I don't yeah. expect my I used truck to walk. Like, yeah, dogs for fifty cents. Yeah, you know, get the fuck out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> did you really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I earned five hundred dollars of fifty cent. No, pieces. you didn't. I you swear to God. Oh my God. And, and then like no I would trade them in for uh, uh, silver dollars. No wonder your calves are. So big, <laughs> yeah. I was, walking <laughs> I was all that dog days. walking. You know what my son did? That was made me. It was so one of the proudest moments I've ever had uh, as a father. I don't remember how old he was. I think he was like nine, and he wanted to. He got the idea that he wanted to sell lemonade. not not lemonade, but like fruit drinks. Right? You, I remember this was a, like four years ago. Oh, dude, it was anymore. so it was so smart. So he wanted to make like fruit drinks or whatever, and so he's like, "Oh, can we buy different flavors?" So I'm asking him a lot of questions. How you know what do you, you think is going to do well? Where would you like to put your stand in front of the house or over here? How come? So he decided I wanted to put it down the street. More cars. I said, okay, cool. What flavor? And he said, I want to do several flavors. I said, how come? Oh, because I'll sell more. I said, that's great. Then the big question was, well, how much should I charge? He asked me that. And I said, well, I said I don't know. I said, what do you think? And he says, I think I'm going to put free. And I said, free. I said, how are you going to make any money? He goes, well, I'm going to say free. But I'm going to accept uh, donations from people so, if they think I did so a good job. So brilliant. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my gosh, that's the most brilliant thing I've ever done in my life. If a little kid, you buy, you get a free lemonade and yeah. it says donations. I'm giving, I'm giving him like five bucks. You're going to give yeah. him like five or ten bucks? Yes. And dude. he did. He only sold like four drinks. You know, it was, a, it was in the neighborhood. But he got like 50 bucks. Yeah, then you don't have to worry about giving him change back either. Yeah. Oh, I was so, yeah. it was so funny. That's yeah. brilliant. Anyway, dude, I had a great weekend with my family. Oh, yeah. How, what, this is the first time they all went up to the Trucky place, right? Yeah, so yeah. how was that? It was great. I had my, my, my parents, my sister, uh, and my brother were there. And, you know, so it was a small group. We're still kind of, you know, doing doing that or whatever. Um, but we had a great time. My dad, of course, he was so happy to be there. He called everybody in Italy so he could show them around and well, talk now, about Now, he was, nice. out of all the people, I, I was most excited to hear his response because he's the craftsman of, of all of, of all of us or anybody that's in family. So I wanted to know, like, when he walked in, did he appreciate the way everything looked? And everything? Yeah, he did very much. And, you know, he's just a proud dad. So he went, like, again, he wanted to call family or whatever. And, my, you know, my brother was there too, so we're having a good time. So my brother is going around looking through the house and whatever. And then he finds the pantry, which, you know, we have well stocked full of Organifi, right? Oh, so there's, yeah. there's, <laughs> there's 
jugs of protein. There's green juice. There's pure. pure. I was chugging all the there's pure gold. And so my, my brother, you know, he kind of likes supplements, but he really likes free stuff. <laughs> like that's his favorite thing. It's in the a world. genetic trait. Huh? Oh yeah. yeah. So he thinks Justin. I got that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he's just making concoctions and drinking stuff, and he's like, he really liked the pure. Yeah. Yeah, he did. So he he would have that in the morning with everybody. I've turned it on to really likes it. Yeah. I don't know what yeah. it. What I don't know if it's because it's subtle. Like I don't feel like it gets you racy. You at definitely all. feel something. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. the lion. I think it's the lion's mane in there. And when you take it with, especially if you combine it with caffeine. So he would, you know, have his coffee. He'd sit out, you know, next to the window so he could see the the, the trees and stuff. Yeah. And he was he had his little pure, so he'd like take a shot of that and then he'd drink his coffee. And then later on, he's like, "I feel good, man. <laughs> I think I feel pretty good." You know, just, he kept talking about it. I would check the pantry and like, "Wow, this guy fucking had like 15 packets of everything." It's worse than I am. Chip dude. it away. Yeah. So yeah. next time you guys go up there, if there's like a lot of stuff gone. Yeah, it wasn't me. Yeah, I saw we just, we got restocked that, and the the Keon Coffee just showed up to there. So the house has got it's it's pretty stocked up with subs right now. It is, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all it's all set up. So it's hey, there thing. was a um, I want to share this with you guys. They did this big. Uh, did I talk about the meta analysis on resistance training and metabolism yeah, versus just, cardio? You just did it. Okay, yeah. so that I, that there was that study that was real big, and so some when some pages when you pull up a study underneath they'll show you other studies that are around things that may be interesting to you. So this is a feature on certain pages that are really, really cool. So I went down the rabbit hole and I found this study on uh, on vegans and meat eaters. So this is going to be, this is kind of interesting. I, I, this is not something I even looked up. It was just, again, it was connected to uh, the, the study on the resistance training boosting metabolism. So I'm going to read to you this was another meta analysis, meaning they studied different studies. You should, I was going to say you should explain to people the difference between a, a meta analysis versus a, a regular study and why those are so much better. So a study is just one study. A meta analysis is where they go through a bunch of studies, it's like hundreds normally, or more. depending, right? Sometimes it's fifteen, ten, whatever, okay. whatever's available, and then they'll come up with a consensus and they'll talk about the best studies in there and the ones that aren't that good or whatever. Mm. So they did this. This particular study was on. It was a clinical uh, review. Um, in food and science nutrition, and the title of the systemic uh, the system systematic review, excuse me, was meat and mental health: a systematic review of meat absent abstention and depression, anxiety, and related phenomena. So what they did is they looked at how avoiding meat could potentially contribute to mental health. Hmm. So would they get better or worse mental health? And this is hmm. there's multiple studies around this. Multiple studies that have been done on this, right? Okay. So it says here, th this is in the actual study itself, the majority of studies, and especially the higher quality studies, showed that those who avoided meat consumption had significantly higher rates or risks of depression, anxiety, and or self-harm behaviors. Hmm. Interesting, right? Any connection you think to like creatine and stuff like that? Like well, so I was just, I think this would be something that's interesting to talk about because I'm really trying to rack my brain on what could potentially be causing that, that, that repeated correlation that they've seen in several studies. One would be the obvious direction would be what nutrients are they potentially lacking that could contribute to anxiety, depression. Yeah. B, and, iron, creatine, like what do I mean? Yes, it could be, right? I know lacking certain nutrients can cause increases, increased incidence of those things like B vitamins. Mm -hmm. If you don't get enough B vitamins, you can have symptoms of anxiety or whatever. Vitamin D, that's another one creatine maybe i did read one study once that showed that uh vegans who supplemented with creatine not only did their cognition improve but they also had uh higher rates of like uh feeling good like they felt better they had more yeah. energy and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff so that's one way and then there's another way that might be i, I kind of speculate like w what's one of the main drivers of someone becoming vegan or staying vegan long term like what would be the main killing animals yeah, right? Like all the vegans I've it's ever- ideology more than, yeah. Yes. The health of it. All the vegans I've ever worked with who tend to stay vegan uh, for long periods of time and studies support this are not people who do it for health reasons, but rather people who do it for morality, people who feel like they don't want to hurt animals. I wonder if the feelings of anxiety, depression, that kind of stuff correlates with the, you know, I also really don't want to hurt any living things. And mm -hmm. so I'm more likely- to go vegan because those behaviors may be connected to, 
you know, those choices or whatever. So I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, really, really interesting. Aren't right? you uh, working on getting a, a vegan doctor right now? Like, I know we're going to do Paul and we're going to do a vegan doctor. Don't you have that you're working on? Yeah, right I now? wanted to do an episode of carnivore versus plant based and interview two people on, who are smart on opposing sides. The polar ends of the spectrum. Yeah, because right? really, you're doing it different, right? I like the way you've decided you wanted to do this. Like, it's right now we've seen Joe Rogan do it, we've seen uh, Mark Bell do this. Where they bring these two on, and then it ends up being they, like they debate, but they're really just yeah, just talking. I feel like it gets nowhere, and yeah. it ends up where you're going to control the interview individually with each of them, and then afterwards talk about it. Yeah, right? I want to do. I want to interview one of them, and then interview the other one. Ask them very similar mm -hmm. questions. Uh, challenge them. My goal is to push and challenge them to explain themselves. I want to use the best arguments from either side. Yeah, you want the most compelling points from either side. Yes, and, and and so it'll be kind of a narrated interview where I'm narrating and then you hear what they have to That's say. That's why I think it gets lost all the time when you have these debates. Like They don't really like get out the most compelling points. It's, 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 it's like nuanced little things of each study and it's so arbitrary. People well, just get, are like, whatever. Like, well, how does this affect me? It's tough to find two people who are both very educated and then also great at arguing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because it, for that to be a really good dynamic commercial or, or episode, you really need two people that are f super educated in their side and then also do very well right. in communication and argument. And that's what we saw happen with what Wilkes and uh, and um, uh, why can't I think of his name right now? Oh, oh, uh, Cresser. Yeah, Cresser. I mean, Cresser is just as brilliant as he is. He is not a debater mm -hmm. at all. Confrontation and, throws people off their game. They get like emotionally involved. Yeah. So what I want to do is I want to I want to find the best counters to either side and then push that and question them with it. Right. Yeah, yeah. So what about this and what about these studies? Like my my goal as the person narrating is to try to push them to to answer the, the most compelling arguments that are against them. Yeah. And then you'll hear both of them. And then at the end, we can kind of discuss, you know, our opinions. And, you know, I didn't want to get like two zealots. I wanted to get two people who are smart and balanced. And Paul Saladino is, he does a very good job of discussing his side. He doesn't seem like a, a zealot. He doesn't come across as a carnivore zealot. I've heard some carnivore zealots and I, I don't think they'll be good for, you know, that kind of a discussion. So, yeah. I don't know, man. We'll we'll, we'll, well see. Well, we happens. almost made it without mentioning COVID. Yeah. I, I was just going to bring it up <laughs> only because there's um uh the, it's interesting because I'm always looking to see which businesses are are thriving amidst all this you know uncertainty and whatnot. And uh, I I just saw that RVs are like going like gangbusters oh, right now. They're up like sense. thirty percent. Oh, uh, interesting. In revenue. Yeah, because everybody's trying to travel right now. And like uh, you know, the summer. Th this is really like one of those things. It's, it's like it's tough to organize. Like I would, I want my kids to go to these camps. That can't happen anymore. Like we can't do these trips. Like there's not like full open areas to use. You can't use the pool, like certain areas. So uh, the RV allows for a lot more freedom in terms of like, you kind of have your own setup. You can camp, you know, alongside the road somewhere, you go to nature. So I think a lot of people are just, you know, that's the move, right? I, now. you know, one of my dreams, and I don't know if this is, you ever have a, like an idea of something and then you do it and you're like, oh, that's not what I thought. Yeah. So I've, I've never done this before, but one of my dreams is to one day rent or maybe buy an RV and do a cross country, like three month tour of the whole country. Go yeah. see all the, the, you know, the major parks and, and sites. And I feel like that would be really fun. Yeah. You know, I feel like that'd be awesome. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, I've done quite a bit of it just from being in a bus with a bunch of smelly football players and whatnot. <laughs> like, so I've, I've seen quite a bit of the Midwest and the East coast, but, uh, yeah, I, I love it, dude. I love traveling and I love going to, especially like national parks, like national parks, is, totally. you got to see all of them. We totally. have like real beautiful areas. Do you know what else is uh, spiked in sales? What? So this is in April, right? In, uh, gun sales, uh, statistics came out. Oh man. Gun sales huge. spiked 71% in April alone. <sighs> 1.79 million guns were sold in April. Wow. Oh, man. That makes <laughs> We're even more armed now. This yeah. Is crazy, dude. Anytime she's doesn't, uh, scary. Do, doesn't like ammo work like kind of like the stock market too, where it's like up and down all the time? Like, probably it gets like really expensive at times like this. Dude, uh, a buddy of mine who he has a nine millimeter and he just, he just, you know, he, he does it for fun. He goes to the range or whatever. He was trying to buy box of, you know, a couple boxes of nine millimeter, you know, uh, uh, bullets or whatever. Yeah. Uh, could not find any. 
had to drive an hour and a half away. Yeah, bullets are hard to come by right just now. Just to yeah, there's uh, people do, are buying like crazy. Do people flip it and sell it online? Do you know? I don't know um, if you can do that with ammo. Can you? Yeah, I don't know about. I that. think you can with ammo. You can't with guns, but you can't with ammo, right? No, no, you can't. You can't even with ammo. No, I said I know you can't with guns. I'm not sure about. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not sure yeah. about ammo, but I know it's 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 going up. I got whatever. something that I'm not sure about. I want to ask you fathers here. So uh, this is so this is a, a new recent uh, dad thing for me, right? So uh, I, I I haven't decided which I think is is worse. Um, so I, did your guys' kids have like a song that just like calmed them down? So yeah. this is this is new for me, right? So I have. Mm-hmm. I, I, you remember that video I posted probably two or three months ago on Max's page, the uh, of him getting his nails uh, done, okay. and he was listening to the the Lion King thing. Like that, oh, that's his song. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. been his song for like uh, three months. He just and loves it. He could be like crying, just ah, we were just, and then I could turn that on and instantly. Yeah, stop. That was so, wait, thunder, thunderstruck yeah. for uh, uh, Everett. Shut is it? Up. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's not. I swear on <laughs> my life. True story. True story. No way. Yeah, he he'd sing it like I'd put him down in the crib and I'd walk away and he would hum it and he'd go. Ah, 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 ah. It's like, <laughs> rad. Oh, yes. Oh, that's that is so great. So, yeah. But I programmed that. Trust me. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. every time he puts it, you yeah. put it on, you give him a lollipop. It's or something. the wind chime. Uh, you know the the, the baby tune the lo- version the lullaby of it. Ones, yeah, yeah. Right. Wow. Uh-huh. So what song from the Lions King? Yeah. It's the uh, In the Jungle, a we, or Wee oh, Wack, Wee oh, yeah, whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. the hell it goes. Right, yeah. so literally, I mean, he could, I'm telling you, he could be crying, which he doesn't cry that often, but when he, if he does, like he's really like in teeth pain or something going on, and I could put that on, and he stops. Now, the only downfall of that, it's like a <laughs> two minute and 30 second song. And then right back to crying? Yeah. <laughs> So, so it's just over and over so again. Funny. So it's on repeat. So what I do a video? Like, the, I, I will. I will. So I, the the question I have for you, like, at one point, does the song become more annoying than listening to crying, oh, dude? Because oh, yeah. I was the other day. I was in the so Katrina had to run into Target to pick something up, and I I had him, and then he was he was and one. He was hungry. His teeth was bothering him, and it just it was like the perfect storm. And he had been in his car seat for a while. He was ready to get out, and he was just going crazy. And I'm driving around the parking lot. And I was like, oh, oh, you know what? Put the song on. Put the song on. Quiet. You know, and then I let it play one time and then right back in. I'm like, fuck, replay. Re-. And so I'm driving around this parking lot for like 15 minutes replaying the song like over and over. That's very normal. I, and then I, I go, okay, what, what is worse? I'm going to get, I'm going to hate this song so uh, much. So I'm not going to want to hate it. Yeah. I know. So I'm like wondering like, what is worse is listening to the kid cry a little bit or <laughs> Dude, kids get obsessed. Yeah. They'll yeah. get, he'll wait till he gets a little older. He's going to find a video oh, on video YouTube or a movie or a yeah. movie. And he's going to just, and literally my kids used to do, my son just used to do this with repeat, find, repeat, finding repeat. Nemo and uh Wally. Yeah. It would literally, as soon as it was done. Yeah, my kids had Wally too. They love that. Really? Movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. He, as soon as it was done, he'd hit play again. So, so you want, you know what song you see that to him? Mm. used to calm him down. Mm. And it was wasn't just the song I had to be the video the music video also yeah uh umbrella with Rihanna what yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. my god how different all our kids are here. oh bro uh, I got Lion King over yeah. here you've yeah. got the fucking ACDC <laughs> yeah. do you know how funny it was to have with a, wind chimes a two-year-old yeah. like getting all fussy and want to cry or whatever being a brat and I put the video on and there's Rihanna all hot and whatever with the rain on her yeah. and he just oh. well at least you didn't <laughs> at least you didn't scar your kids for life already I I, I have like okay so basically I had the task of snaking my toilet. Uh, this is like two days ago. So or, hold on. Okay. Did you clog your toilet? Was it you? <sighs> yes, but it wasn't like how you <laughs> how you would think, right? So I was actually uh, I have this this um, basically a shelf right directly over the toilet, which is a flaw in itself. Oh, it's something like, fell in there. Yes. It, so one of my combs just I, I was reaching for something. It fell as I flushed the toilet. My comb fell simultaneously as it was flushing and then just went zoop, like right oh. in there. I was like, no. So I was trying to come back. And this is right before we left uh, to go, you know, elsewhere. Uh, and I, I just came back and I was like, I'll get to it when I get home. I got to it and I'm, I, I don't want to wear anything, you know, because I'm dealing with shit. You know? <laughs> so I have to like strip down to like my boxers and whatever. And so I'm in there just like snaking this thing and, and, and trying to get the, the comb out and having a hard time and flushing and, and all this shit's coming back up and it's just disgusting, whatever. And so I'm sitting there and I'm just getting frustrated 
And then, you know, like, I think it was Everett comes in to ask me something. And he's like, oh. And then Ethan comes in. Then Courtney comes in. And they all just looked, like, horrified at me. And I'm like, what? What's wrong? Or whatever. <laughs> so, basically, like, the underwear I had is a little bit old. Okay. And I had, like, a hole. And my balls were just, <laughs> just <laughs> hanging out. And I, was, and I was sitting there with a snake and like poop on my arms. And I'm just like, uh, I was like, this image is going to be burned in their <laughs> head forever, dude. I ruined them. It was just balls? It was just balls. <laughs> and then my balls, my sack was just out. No nothing dick. else. Right through this hole. <laughs> no dick? No dick. It was just, just balls. Ball. Dad. <laughs> yeah. Dad, yeah. Dad, why? Dad, you know, like. You oh. sat in some gum. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Oh, <laughs> it's, I was like trying to joke it off. I'm like, oh. Oh, yeah. Enjoy the view, you know. Oh, I guess. And, and, that's, yeah. oh my that's god, disgusting. So they, they're, they're horrifying. I can't get, I can't get away with holy underwear. That Katrina is the minute it has like at all a breakdown. She's it ends throwing, up gone. Yes, yeah. me too. Like, like Courtney will come that. and grab and just rip them yeah. off me. It's like throw them away. Oh yeah. yeah. I, you know what? It, I don't know what it is about. It was comfy though. This is true. What it is it about men and old articles of clothing? Because I'm the same way. The older a t-shirt gets, the more holes it has in it, it's the like more I value it. It's finely comfortable. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say that. That's the t-shirt one is like, it gets more comfortable. The yeah. more times it's been washed, the softer it becomes. Yeah. Underwear for me, it's like, it, there's always like uh, the the backup or as, a, as a single bachelor. It doesn't exist for me anymore because Katrina will throw it away. But the old me was like, you always have the... You know, three or four pair that have got holes and are falling apart. That's at the back of the underwear drawer in case, in case you didn't get laundry done that week in time or what that. It's like at least I have some emergency underwear. So that's <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the theory for or was the theory for me as a, as a bachelor. But now it's like, and that was like my argument when she tried when she started first starting away. I'm like, listen, if you do that, you gotta you gotta back it up with new stuff. Like yeah, you can't you, do you that. Better to be me. making Costco trips because <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna well, still wear these. It yeah. took it took Jessica a full year of us being together for her to like be okay with the the, the bikini underwear. That that I wear for the, <laughs> for the longest time. She's like, I just can't get used to you oh, to so funny. walking we, around with them. We were vacationing with Sal and his family. Uh, like Courtney was doing the laundry. Oh like, yeah. <laughs> she's like holding up Sal's underwear. Are these like, Jessica's? She's like, whose are these? <laughs> <laughs> and then she found out it was yours. Like, ah! like <laughs> drops it. Yeah, hey, I'll tell you what though. They keep everything in. The balls don't ever oh, come yeah, out. It's nice and snug. They're, huh? they're stuck. Dude, yesterday. Hugging them. Yesterday, I went. Uh, so I, when I was up with my family, my sister's uh, fiance, he, you know, he likes smoking cigars, right? So I haven't had a cigar in so long, and I forgot how enjoyable they were to sit down and just puff on a, a cigar, right? Oh, it's the best. So I had a great time. We're sitting outside with the fire, puffing on a cigar, and I'm not going to finish the whole cigar. There's no way I'll puke. So I had a whole bunch of it left. So I'm like, ah, I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it, and I'm going to take it home or whatever. So anyway, last night, I'm like, I'm going to go outside and have some of the cigar because I got it or whatever. So I go outside. And my daughter, she's sitting there. She goes to Jessica. She goes, "What's Papa doing?" And Jessica's like, "Oh, he's he's just you know he's enjoying a cigar outside." She's like, "I don't know if I'm okay with this, you know, <laughs> just judgment, <laughs> just you know? pure judgment." Oh yeah, yeah I come yeah. inside. She didn't want me to kiss her. Didn't oh, want me to man. touch her. Nothing because oh, I had a cigar. You know oh, I mean? That's great. So she's looking at me like, mm. "Dude, I love the smell of cigars though. It's like so different." I than you know what? I don't. I don't think it's so much the smell. Yeah, I think well, she was just judging the. Yeah, well, yeah, the totally. ar the aroma it puts off, but then you still smell like cig it, an it ashtray. Kind of yeah, your hands, your, your, your fingers, and your and for everybody else, it doesn't smell yeah, after yeah. the fact, right? When it's burning, it smells good. It takes like three days to get out and taste out of your. It's just funny. Even my kids will do that. Even if they see me drink a beer or something, like yeah. what are you doing? You shouldn't be drinking. <laughs> you know, I'm like, what? So I, I've got this new guilty pleasure. Uh, so I don't know if you guys have seen this show on Netflix. It's called Selling Sunset. It's total trash TV. Oh, I've seen that. Have you, uh, you I haven't watch watched all the, like, so, the model girls. Yes, that they, yeah. yeah okay. So I, I, I'm here for the bikinis and the expensive houses. That's uh -huh. what I'm there for, right? Yeah, so Got it. But the funny part about it is that Katrina walks down one day, and I'm sitting there. I've got Max, right? And him and I are watching it. And she's like, what are you watching with him right now? I was like, he fucking loves it, <laughs> right? So this was like, uh, a, like this was like, yeah, like yeah, yeah, like a week or two ago. And now that it, it, the episodes have been on in the afternoon, sometimes when I get home, it's like every time it comes on, like he could be playing in his in his pack and play, he'll stop and he watches it. Oh no! <laughs> so she, she, Katrina submitted the other oh, day. That's like, hilarious! Oh my god, whatever. Uh, Let him watch the damn thing. I'm like, he likes it. You know what I'm saying? It's so, interesting. Yeah. It's good. It's good association. You know what I mean? yeah. Investments. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to yeah, get him. Yeah. She teases me too because I think a lot of a lot of times I'll, I'll when I come home early I, I still have to take uh, calls you know those business calls that we got to do and shit 
And uh, I'll put him in the, the carrier and then I'll go walk and put my AirPods on and I'll have these these calls. And she goes, I think you are subliminally trying to train him and you do that on purpose. Like, <laughs> take that call at a different time. Like, she's like, you want him to hear all that business talk. I said, 100%. Are you kidding yeah. me? It yeah. starts now. Well, I hide it. Yeah. yeah. They sell, you know what? They sell kids' books now that teach kids basics about, but through children's stories. You can find some of these books. I'll teach them like, like economics and stuff through. Yeah, so there's one oh, book. I've talked about this before. There's one book, the pizza uh, one. You said yes. No one knows how to make a pizza. I think it's called Julie Borowski. I love that I book. That Did I get one for your son? You got the tree, the giving tree. That's right. Yeah, you got I got you one in Spanish. Oh, yeah, you got the Spanish <laughs> giving tree. I remember when I opened that up. Like, what the fuck is South Eek? Right? Like, like, you know, that's gonna, racist. His mom and dad are a little <laughs> yeah, darker. Yeah, yeah, let's give him one of these or whatever. <laughs> no, the pizza one's really good because it goes through and it talks about how now. There's not a single person on earth who knows a how to make a pizza. And what it means by that is like the dough was, you know, was made by wheat, which was grown by the farmer and the machines. There was someone that made the machines that picked up the wheat and it goes through this whole thing to show how millions of people essentially work together who don't know each other contributed, yeah. through markets. And I thought it was an absolutely brilliant, you know, book for little kids. It's so, like a, it's, a, is cool. it how young? Like, is it too young for him? I imagine it's still You could too start reading it. He's not going to understand it now, yeah, but yeah. I think if you start reading it now, he'll start to get that get, good association. He'll mm. like, cause it's got great pictures and it's pizza. You know, what kid doesn't like pizza? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You pizza know, it's pretty rules. Cool. Dude, there was a study, a brain imaging study, Justin, I want to talk to you about this, Ooh. about how, what side of the brain um, really leads to creativity. Hmm. You guys have heard the whole like left right, right brain, left brain. Yeah. Yeah. So like the right side of the brain apparently is the creative, creative side. Uh -huh. The left side is the logical linear oh, I thinking. That was the opposite. No, no. And so they were, you know, there's been other people have said that's not true. The whole brain works together and, you know, what's going on anyway. Mm -hmm. So they did this big study on uh, jazz guitarists mm. during, uh, while they were in, uh, doing uh, improvisation. So while they were improving music, which is a, it, you know that's a that's a creative you know endeavor when you're playing music. Sure. And what they found through brain imaging was that it was driven primarily by the right hemisphere. Hmm. Um, now this is mostly true in people who are in, inexperienced at improvisation. So people who don't impro improv much music, mm -hmm. when they're asked to do it, the right brain lights up. However, musicians who are experienced at this kind of music when they're impro doing improv, when they're just kind of creating as they go along, that showed that they rely a lot on the left hemisphere. Interesting. Yeah, and so what they think is that the that creative is a the the create that creativity is a right brain ability, but when it, when a person deals with something that's unfamiliar, mm. but when that creativity draws on well learned routines, then the left hemisphere kicks in. So if you mm -hmm. practice something over and over, you practice- So you have the formula now, so now it's just about implementing yes, it. Yes, but if, if it's brain. totally new experience and it's pure creativity, hmm. it comes from the right side. If it's creativity that's pulling from experience, like this is something that I've done many, many times, but I'm still being creative, yeah. then the left side kicks in and how fascinating is that yeah. that they can start well, to see that? that's really cool. Isn't that interesting? Very yeah. interesting. Yeah, I love that. First question is from M Oat 5 when trying to build a legging body part, how do you incorporate it into your routine or do you just have to change up your workout more dedicated to the legging body part? This person obviously does not have MAPS Aesthetic. Yeah, or, so, yeah MAPS Aesthetic or MAPS Prime. You know? yeah, yeah. yeah, but I mean, MAPS Aesthetic was literally designed with this in mind. Like mm -hmm. it was literally uh, created around how I would train for a show and each time I train for a show, I would focus on one or two muscle groups that were lagging body parts that I was trying to develop and bring up and how we implement uh, the increased volume in a program to do that specifically is in there. And it's customizable. So if, you know, the program's designed that if, you know, if yours is shoulders and somebody else's butt and hamstring that you just kind of plug and play and we teach you how to build that volume in. Yeah. So essentially what the traditional advice, which is good advice, is what Adam's talking about, which is you do more volume, you do more sets for that lagging body part. You actually put more work in for that specific lagging body part. And the way we do it in MAPS Aesthetic, and this is something you can do even on your own, is on the days that you're not supposed to work that body part, you throw in a few extra moderate intensity sets to increase the volume. But here's the deal. If you have a lagging body part because you're, you don't connect well to that muscle group, which is common, mm -hmm. okay? It's, it's oftentimes like... 
let's say glutes are your weak body part and you're thinking, okay, I'm going to do more of the glute exercises, squats and deadlifts and single leg deadlifts and all that stuff. If you don't connect well to the glutes, you're still going to have trouble because all that extra volume might actually develop all surrounding. All the work's still going to go into the quads. Yeah, and it's exactly, it might go into other body parts. So what you might want to do is rather than just adding more work is focus on how you connect to that new body part, how you can feel that new body part through squeezing more, through slowing down the reps. Really focus on feeling that muscle do the work rather than just going through the motions of the exercise. Now that can be done with really, really good proper mobility work. I'm not talking about flexibility. I'm talking about connecting to those muscle groups. 90-90, for example, if done properly, will help you connect to your glutes. You can do this with almost any body part. You can go through a mobility workout for these areas and connect to these muscle groups. Then when you go work out, you'll feel them more. So MAPS Prime, believe it or not, I know it's a, a priming workout, helps you connect to the exercise, all that stuff. It's also phenomenal for bringing up lagging body parts because oftentimes what you'll find when you do your assessments is, oh, I'm not moving right. And oftentimes that's because I'm not connecting. Well, almost to always it's that. Yeah, almost right. always the the root reason why a muscle group is not developing. If you're working it out, right? So if you're evenly working it out with all the other muscles, there's you know, and people are like, it doesn't make sense. I, you know, I train my butt as much or more than I train legs and all these other muscle groups, and yet it's not developing at the same rate. It's always a connection issue. It's right. always you're not connecting to it very well. So that's where priming. I mean. Prime and aesthetic. Like if you if you don't have those, that's an incredible investment. And and at bare minimum, if you don't do either one of those, then at least it go to Justin and, and uh, the webinar that I did. So those two webinars that are free, go through that and utilize that and apply some of those tools if you don't want to invest in anything. Yeah, and that's mm -hmm. the Maps Prime webinar, I believe. And there's there's assessments in there. He actually teaches you how to do this and what priming looks like. But really, the focus is if you have a lagging body part, feel that muscle. When you do exercises, get get to a point where you can really feel it doing the the exercise, and then when you add volume, the extra volume is going to go to the body part that you're trying to target. Uh, next question is from Jamilia144. What is the best hamstring hypertrophy exercise that uses minimal equipment? So hypertrophy means building. So what's the best hamstring building exercise that uses uh, minimal equipment? Now, I love working hamstrings, especially in women. I think when women develop nice hamstrings, they tend to be very happy with the way that their legs look. Hamstrings also tend to get neglected by a lot of people. And really strong hamstrings really give you good stability in your squats, definitely in your deadlifts. There's a lot of hamstring Your movement looks a lot better too. Definitely. Yeah. Now, to be honest with you, the best hamstring exercises are the ones that you don't use much equipment. Like when you go to the gym, and you're thinking, I'm going to work my hamstrings, where do you typically go? Yeah, lying leg yeah. curls. Leg, leg curls. curls. All the leg curls. Seated leg curls. Lying leg curls. One-legged leg curls. It's like a bunch of leg curls. That does work the hamstrings, but it focuses mainly on a part of the hamstring called the bicep femoris. It's the, it's the part of the hamstring that flexes the knee. Nothing wrong with that, but the hamstrings, one of their main functions is stabilizing the hips and helping you with what's called hip hinging. And the best exercises develop the whole hamstring much better, and those are like single leg deadlifts, mm -hmm. stiff leg deadlifts, good, good mornings, mornings. Yeah. exercises that work that hip, you know, hinging. Those exercises really develop the hamstrings well. My hamstrings at one point were really well developed. I would get lots of compliments on them. And I did almost no hamstring curls. I did mostly those kinds of exercises. And you don't need a lot of equipment. In fact, if you did a good hip hinging single leg toe touch yeah. uh, without any weight, That'll really work to handle. I love cycle. single leg deadlifts. I think they're super underrated, and it's something that uh, just the stability of it too, like really puts that muscle to work. Uh, and on top of that too, like Romanian deadlifts, uh, good mornings, like these are all barbell, like all you need is a barbell and weights, but I mean, you really can, can build and develop uh, hamstrings, uh, just by those very specific exercises. Well, and if you don't have a barbell, I mean, you can do dumbbells for single leg, True. single leg deadlift with bar or dumbbells is extremely challenging. Mm -hmm. It does not take, uh, you know, very much weight to challenge one leg and deadlifts. And the, I think part of the reason too, I mean, Sal makes the case for oh, you're recruiting a lot more with those movements you can also load those movements way yes. more so I, I remember when i and i shared this on in the show like i don't know a few years ago 
but it was when I was on that kick when I was trying to chase Sal with his deadlift and I was deadlifting a lot. I was deadlifting at least three times a week and I completely eliminated like all my hamstring machine exercises. I wasn't doing any of that. And I'll never forget going back to lying leg curls after like seven months, eight months or whatever it was of not doing any machines. And I was like 2X strength yep. on the lying leg curls. That And you're talking about a machine that I've been using for you know 15 plus years of my life. I completely stopped using it. All I focused on was getting better at my deadlift because all I cared about was trying to chase a PR. And then when I came back, I had 2X the amount of weight I was doing that I'd spent years slowly increasing five pounds yeah. here there and so the development the strength and my hamstrings just from deadlifting just trumped anything i'd ever done on a machine it was like the same effect of when i was doing bicep curls trying to build my biceps versus doing like pull-ups like mm. I, I got a lot more uh muscle development doing pull-ups actually next question is from gd penna You've all talked about how stretching as a form of working out is ineffective or even detrimental, but exercises like the pigeon pose seem kind of like a stretch. What differentiates priming movements like these from stretches? Did we not address? Did we? I thought I addressed this maybe on the on the question on the webinar. Oh, is that where or yeah. the IG? As somebody, yeah, somebody said this. I'm like, no. Oh, you're right. That was on the webinar. Yeah, somebody it was. brought this up. So what make? Okay, so uh, what different? Okay, let me put it this way. I'll give you an analogy. Right, uh, Justin gives me five dollars, or I take five dollars from him. What differentiates one being theft versus one being him giving me the money? All about the intention. Same thing with uh, priming movements. Pigeon stretch would be me getting into pigeon pose and just relaxing, relaxing into it. And yeah. allowing the muscles to stretch. By the way, there's nothing wrong with static stretching if it's done properly. There's actually that actually could be a part of a good mobility practice. Well, it's programmed in the end of prime, right? That's right. So we program static stretching. It's what's been done wrong with static stretching for so long. And the, the studies are conclusive on this, and we know now that we and we weren't doing this before, yet we still have trainers that aren't privy to this. And that's static stretching before you go into weight training is a bad idea. Mm -hmm. That's not a good idea. But that doesn't mean that static stretching is bad. It just means that's not the place to do it. Before you're about to go in and lift heavy weight, the last thing you want to do is relax all of your muscles in a static stretch. Right. You simply doing it actively, like in a, a mobility move, is different. You're not relaxing. You're not relaxing the muscle. You're activating it. Right. It's the right. whole like active versus passive. Uh, you know, parasympathetic versus sympathetic. Like, what state? Are are you trying to place your body into? And like, if you're going into uh, like a workout, you want to be able to wake everything up. And so th this priming uh, type of, of stretch is really trying to activate everything and really get your body to be familiar okay. with that position, but also have strength to manipulate uh, your body out of that position, to, to be firm in that position. And so really being able to recruit muscles while in these certain poses is everything. Right. So if you're confused, I'm going to try and make it it, uh, as simple as possible. So intention is what makes something priming versus just a static stretch. Okay. So here's what it looks like when you're doing pigeon pose and you're doing a static stretch. You're just sitting there and allowing things to stretch and you're relaxing in the pose. What makes it priming? You're in the same pose. Here's the difference. When you're in that pose, you pull your legs up like you're trying to go deeper, but you're pulling your legs up by activating the muscles. And then you do that for five seconds and then you push them down like you're trying to push yourself out of the pose. And you do that for five seconds. And you can repeat that for sets. The difference is I'm sucking myself in the stretch and I'm pushing myself out of the stretch. Yeah. I'm you're activating doing something. I'm activating the shortened muscles and I'm activating the lengthened muscles. I'm literally tensing both sides for reps. And that's the difference between priming and static. Now, what's the difference in the way it works the body? Priming is activating those muscles. It's connecting my central nervous system to them in different ranges of motion. Static stretching is literally trying to turn off my central nervous system, getting it to chill out so I can achieve a greater range of motion. Mm -hmm. Static stretching is great post-workout. Priming is awesome before your workout. That's the big difference. And if you prime before your workout, you have improved performance, better muscle activation. You can hit lagging body parts better, better mobility, and better stability and control if you do static stretching at the end of your workout, you improve recovery, improve passive ranges of motion. You get the CNS to calm down so things can recover a little faster. So that's the big difference. Now, if you're not uh, educated on that and you just see someone, they look a little different. But if you don't know the difference, you might think, 
What's the difference? Why they look exactly the same? It's intention. Intention makes them very, very different in how the body responds. And both these, all of these, including foam rolling, are all included in Maps Prime, and we and we program it to teach you how to, you should do this yourself. And that's the idea of every program that we've done is not only to take you through this stuff, but also teach you like how yeah. you would do this for yourself. Apply the concepts the right way. Next question is from Jay Herrick. Is it more beneficial to break your workouts into splits or can a full body be just as effective? Okay, so I know what the studies say. Hmm. And the studies we haven't talked about this in a while. The studies show that if volume is equated um, and controlled, that really it doesn't make that big of a difference if you do up a split versus a full body workout. Um, so long as frequency of hitting the body parts is kind of similar and total volume is is all controlled. And I get that, okay? I've seen the studies. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. Now, here's where I'm going to go uh, kind of different than the studies. Based off of my experience of training lots and lots and lots of different people, generally speaking, for most people on a long-term basis, full-body type workouts just work better. And here's there's a couple reasons why. One, full-body workouts tend to promote more frequency of training the body parts. That's number one. That's a huge one, though. That's a big one. Because the, the thing that I wanted to add to what you're saying right now is that the thing that none of these studies do is they don't factor in what we have got an experience in doing, which is learning about people's behaviors. Correct. Yeah. And that is a, such a huge piece of this. And after you've trained tons of people, you start to pick up on these patterns of, oh, wow, sure, in a perfect six-week study where we control the body part split, volume is exactly the same, we're splitting hairs on which is better or right. not. But when you factor in what we tend to see with people's behaviors, and that's if I have a client or clients that are on body part splits, what tends to happen over a six-week period of time or even months or longer than that is, you know, vacation happens or they get busy one day or this week they only made three days in the gym instead of five or six, which they would need to do in order to hit all the body parts with the same amount of volume. Or they skip the body parts they're ne not necessarily big fans of. Right. It, it was It's not uncommon for a dude to follow a split with good volume and stuff and, oh, leg day coming up. I'll just do one of the leg day workouts and I'll skip the other one. When, when you do a full body routine and you're training your whole body, behaviorally speaking, you tend to be more consistent with what you're doing. Now, here's the other reason. This is more of a physiological one. So let's say, okay, fine, I'm consistent no matter what. What's the big difference? This is my uh, theory, okay? When you train the whole body, first off, the muscle building signals, a lot of it is localized. What that means is if I just work my biceps, most of the muscle building signal goes to the biceps. But there is this systemic muscle building signal that gets to, that kind of gets sent. So when people just train their arms, most of the are, the gains go in their arms. But studies show that their legs develop a little bit too. Or if you just train one side, you know, if I just train my right arm, it would definitely get bigger and stronger than my left. But we do notice in studies that the left arm gains a little bit of muscle, as if the body's trying to balance itself out. Okay, mm -hmm. so that tells me that there's this systemic muscle building signal that's being sent. Okay, I believe that training the whole body sends a much louder overall systemic muscle building signal than training individual body parts on a split. I think it's a bigger, louder, more effective signal. And by the way, this is how all bodybuilders and strength athletes trained before steroids became a thing. Yeah. Before that became a thing, everybody did full body workouts. What you're describing, I've actually heard it uh, termed irradiation, like the the concept of irradiating. Um, you know, uh, more muscle fibers will uh, be activated as a result of you know, like doing an isolated movement with with my my arm, like I'm doing a, a bicep curl. Like, uh, you know, my shoulders are going to get affected, my pecs are going to get affected. Like, I could brace and, and anchor my body down with my core. My legs are going to feel you know a bit of tension with that. So uh, it, it does it spans uh you know across the body and you get you get more bang for your buck that way and this is why like the you know the total body approach to me just has it, it just has more functional application but it also uh you know tends to lead more towards uh muscle development yeah and you tend to people here's a behavioral one when you're doing three full body workouts versus a split where you're hitting different body parts People tend to choose the most effective exercises with the full body, and with the splits, they tend to do more of the pumping, isolation, you know, type of equipment. And that might be okay if you're a well-developed bodybuilder where you need to do special focus on certain things, but most people are not. 
most people are not, you know, stage ready and haven't been training for for 10 years or whatever. And so what you find when you see full body workouts is people squat more often, people press more often, they row more often, they do more of these effective exercises. When they do splits, you see more cable exercises and machines and isolation exercises. Now, what does that mean in terms of results? You're going to build more muscle and more strength with those most more effective exercises. Mm-hmm. I actually read an article once where they interviewed several top strength building coaches, people who work with a lot of everyday people, not specifically bodybuilding coaches, but rather coaches who work with, like like us, lots of everyday people. And the consensus was that eight out of 10 people are going to get superior results with a full body routine uh, over a split. In my experience, that's 100% along the lines of what, I, what I've experienced. Great. 80% of the people that I've ever trained, which is probably 80% of the people listening to this podcast right now, you're just going to generally get better gains across the board, better aesthetics, better strength by doing you know two or three full body workouts a week rather than doing you know a type of split. Now, splits can also be effective, depends on the person. We have a program mm-hmm. that is a split. It's called MAP Split. So we wouldn't have created a program if we don't think – for some people, there's there's value in that. But if you look at all of our programs, most of them are kind of centered around this full body approach because most of you listening are going to do far better that way. And by the way, I switched to a full body workout routine when I was already advanced. The first, I don't know, 10 years of my training was splits. Mm-hmm. Then I, I started reading old body you know, magazines from the 40s and articles of strong men and, you know, John Grimmick and Steve Reeves and Eugene Sandow. And I said, ah, you know, they all did full body routines. Let me try what happened. I never look back. I've never done really a split for a long period of time because full body for me, who's trained for a long time, far superior in terms of the I was the same way, but mine really was for the consistency reason. And I got to think that there's a a large portion of the people listening right now that would agree that they're, they probably fall in a category more like myself than the crazy bodybuilder who hasn't missed a workout in eight years. Mm. You know, what ends up happening is, you you know, you have a week that was great. You're in the gym five or six days a week, and then another week it's three or four times a week. And what ends up happening when you run splits is something always suffers. Mm. Where if I'm, if I'm running a full body routine, nothing ever suffers. If I miss a day in the gym, I still hit everything evenly. Mm-hmm. Where that that's what's nice about, for me, that's what I have found the most beneficial is that I never am inconsistent with a muscle group mm-hmm. because it's inevitable. You're going to have weeks that you, you miss a day or two in the gym here and there. That's completely normal. Other thing, other priorities in your life. And so when that happens, it's not a big deal because that week you still get a full body routine. The muscles aren't being under, under hit. Right? Mm-hmm. I also found too, that I'm less likely to overreach, uh, you know, in certain yeah. yep. body groups, like where I, I do leg day and I would just blast my legs and it would, uh, uh, you know, affect the whole rest of my week. I would have like terrible, Terrible workouts after that. That's yeah, the other thing. Absolutely. I mean, think about it this way. Let's say today's chest day, right? My shoulders and triceps are still getting a little bit of work. And then tomorrow's shoulders and triceps. And then the next day's back. But my, my biceps are going to get a little extra work. You don't have like full days of full rest like you do with full body. I'll say this and I 100% will stand by it. For the average person, you can develop a decent physique with two full, as long as your diet's good and you're otherwise relatively active, two full body workouts a week would be phenomenal for most people. Most people would be quite satisfied if they did a good two-day full full body routine. Now, for people who want to get advanced, get really strong, have high strength numbers, three days a week of full body. If you had good programming, otherwise good nutrition, good good you know activity, three days a week could develop a phenomenal physique. I do, for the most part, I follow that. Now, I'm active on the other days too, but for the most part, my lifting – is three full body workouts. Now you go back in time, look these people up, look up John Grimmick, look up Steve Reeves, look up Eugene Sandow, look up some of those old time strength and tell me that they don't look phenomenal. And by the way, those guys largely trained naturally. They didn't even take supplements. Creatine didn't exist back then. Look at their physiques. They worked out three days a week, maybe four days a week, full body routines, and they looked phenomenal. So for most people, full body is just tends to be uh, the most effective. Um, and with that, look, we record our podcasts on video as well. So we are audio right now. You're probably listening to us through your phone, just in your ears. But we're also on YouTube. We're on a channel, Mind Pump Podcast, where you can listen to the podcast and watch us. And I promise we're not as good looking as we sound, but it's still fun. So make sure you come check us out.